Okay, so this is what we're going to be looking at today, a quick Star Wars blaster tutorial. Okay, so in After Effects, once you've got your footage imported, we're going to just go straight to the frame where we want the blaster to initially fire. Go layer solid, uh, layer new solid, sorry, select it to be white, as this is going to be the colour of the core of our beam. Just going to turn the opacity down so we can see what we're doing. Grab the pen tool and just going to mask a shape at the end of the muzzle where we want the blaster to start firing. Now this initially is the exact same technique as if we're making a lightsaber, if you know how to do that. So, keyframe mass path, go forward a frame and stretch out your your beam here um, in the path that you want the blast to be traveling. Um, make it slightly bigger as the perspective is sort of slightly towards the camera. So we're just making it that's like the beam is sort of coming close to the camera by increasing the scale, the size at the end. Um, now if you look at Star Wars movies, um, when the, the blaster is initially fired, it tends to stretch out at the end of the muzzle and then the rear of the blast sort of tends to catch up with the front until it's like a consistent beam traveling through the air, if that makes sense. <laughs> um, so that's what we're trying to mimic here. Um, okay, so we put the opacity back up, we've just got this white solid flying out of a gun. It looks kind of ridiculous at the moment, but uh, <laughs> we're gonna get there eventually, don't worry. Okay, so once we've got that, next step is to go to layer once again we're going to go new solid again this time set the color to black once we've done that we're going to move this layer in between our original footage and that white mask that we just created going to select this white layer duplicate it four times so five in total i'm just going to feather each one individually now so the first one we're going to feather to three the second one we're going to feather to about 10. the third one uh we'll go for about 30. Um, the fourth one, we're going to feather to about 60. And the final one will go for about 100. Um, so what that's done now is sort of um, adjust the intensity of each glow on each mask. So we've got a bit of variation in our glow, uh, which just makes it look a little cooler. Then we're going to go up here and select our original footage. Um, we're going to right click on that and go new composition from selection or new comp from selection. Click that. What that's done is bring our original footage into a new composition. Now we're going to make sure we trim it to the exact same length as our original composition, otherwise these aren't going to line up. Then let's grab the one we just worked on, drag it straight on top, and if you've trimmed it correctly, it will line straight up so that blaster is in the same place. Let's just show on this. Okay, once that's done, we're going to select the layer, right click, blend in mode and screen. Now we can see what's going on. There we go. And what we've done is we've made it possible to um, edit and manipulate this layer completely separately from our footage. So we can do whatever we want to this now and manipulate it any way we want, which is exactly what we're gonna do. So effect with that layer selected, color correction, color balance, and I'm gonna give it some color. Let's tick preserve luminosity, otherwise it'll look ridiculous. Let's bring up, in this case, the reds. So the highlights, the mids, right up, and then play with the shadows. I don't tend to go full on this because I think it looks a little too intense. So around maybe 70, 75, around there, looks quite nice. Um, obviously you can go for green or blue or whatever color you want your blaster rifle to, to fire. Okay, now next step, a really basic muzzle flash image here. You can get these off Google Images, anyway. Set the blending mode to screen so we can uh, see what's going on. I'm just gonna take the 3D layer here and adjust it so it looks at the right angle. There we go, that looks okay. okay. Set it so it's only visible from the very first frame, the same frame that we initially fire the blaster from. Yeah, that's the first one. So position that there, get the scale exactly how you want it. Then we're gonna just tint this um, to sort of match the, the, the same color as our blast. So in this case, red. Now with this, you never wanna go as dark as you've gone on the blast because it looks just like ridiculous as you can see there. So we're gonna go for a sort of pale red um, quite white, almost pinkish. Uh, play with the opacity a little bit. I, th I think a little lower looks a bit more real. In fact, let's go slightly darker on that. Just a tad. Yeah, about there. We're going to come back to the muzzle flash in a second anyway, so don't panic. It will look even better. Let's just keyframe that, go forward a frame, bring the opacity to zero. All that does is make sure it's only there for that one frame. Okay, this is optional. Um, I'm just going to Drag a quick smoke asset in there. You can get these from anywhere. Um, Action Essentials, Triumph Films, 
Uh, I think Corridor Digital have a free one on one of their old tutorials. Um, so yeah, ch chuck that on, sort the scale, set the blending mode to screen, um, and then mess with the opacity. I think about 50, 30 to 50 percent looks about right. Um, I think this adds a really cool element to all sort of um, weapons being fired like this because obviously any gun does release smoke, even a, even a, a laser blaster, you would think. Okay, next from this, go back to the muzzle flash. We're going to select the muzzle, duplicate it, which is Command D or Control D. We're going to take this layer, tint it to white this time, put it underneath your original muzzle, and as you can see, what this does, by having it underneath, it gives a really nice sort of white central glow. Um, same sort of thing as our uh, initial blast. Okay, final part of our tutorial now is select your original footage, hit Command or Control D on the keyboard to duplicate it. Then we're just going to select the pen tool and select the areas of your footage that you think would be affected by the glow of the blast. So I think our actor here would... Um, James in this case would glow from the light of the rifle, same as the, the, this uh, this cupboard in the background. So what we're going to do here, right click on this layer, blend in mode, this time go add. All that does is just brighten your footage. There we go, that looks absolutely ridiculous. <laughs> this time, once again, color correction, tint, set it to the same sort of pale red to match our blast, about there. Then as that looks ridiculous, we're going to hit F on our keyboard for feather, pull these right up on both masks to spread that glow out quite a lot. And I think this is one of the key elements uh, to selling effects like this is having something that sort of interacts with your environment to make it look like it's actually there. Obviously a blast like this is letting out light. So this is exactly what it would do. It would glow on the things around. So just play with the opacity and the exact same now here as you did with the muzzle flash, which in a keyframe the opacity so it's only there um, in the frames that the light is in shot. In this case, the light being the blast beam. So obviously as the beam gets further away out of shot, the intensity of the glow would be reduced. We do this by reducing the opacity. Nice and simple. One more, and I think it would be right down to zero. Okay, so this is what we're left with. <laughs> Hope you guys enjoyed that. If you wanna learn how to do this lightsaber effect, check our tutorial here. Hope you enjoyed it and hope you learned something. Thanks for watching. See you next time, guys.